What's up internet? I'm Corey from Bitfire today with a video review of the 7G, formerly 6G firewall rules by Jeff Starr over at Perishable Press. I've spent the last 20 years of my software career hacking internet applications. Today we're going to be doing a review of the 7G firewall for Apache. We'll start with a quick overview of the firewall features, what you can expect, and then we'll do a deep dive and see exactly what types of attacks it blocks, what types of attacks it doesn't block. Let's get into it. First, I want to say thank you to Jeff Starr for creating the 7G firewall block list. I can tell he's put a lot of time into this and he's collected a lot of different data sets from a lot of different people. And I've taken a look at his firewall rules and they actually are put together pretty well. Uh, that said, this firewall is really for anyone who's running Apache, which if you come over here and take a look at the internet statistics, currently makes up 35% of all internet servers. So he's really covered a pretty large array of potential websites. Um, the 7G firewalls is really for anyone who's running a web server, probably a system administrator or a site administrator, who wants to just add an extra layer of protection to cut down on the noise that's coming to their website. It's going to block things like any requests from some very common web hosting companies like Amazon, um, uh, DigitalOcean, a couple other big sites like that. It's going to block a lot of your basic SQL injection. Well blocks some of your SQL injection, blocks a lot of your basic cross-site scripting attacks, and it does have filters to block a lot of bots that report themselves as bots with their user agent string. So that said, I've already downloaded 7G. If you want to take a look at it, go to perishablepress.com slash 7G firewall. He has links all over his website. Uh, Scott also does a lynda.com video training series on securing your WordPress blog. So if you're a WordPress user, you might want to check that out. Uh, if you scroll down here, you can see the download 7G, and here's a link. Uh, and when you download that, what you're going to get is this file right here, 7G firewall. Oops, if I edit the actual file. And this is a, ser this is a list of Apache mod rewrite filters. We can actually get a little bit better syntax highlighting here if we replace that as a .ht access file and look at the H. Here we go. This looks a little better. And he's broken this up into a couple different sections. Here we have query string. So if you're very familiar with web at all, you know that anything after the question mark in your URL is part of the query string. He has the request URI. This is path components inside the URL. And he has things looking at the user agent. So this is, you know, uh, some bots might report themselves as a bot. For instance, Googlebot, when it's crawling your website, has Googlebot in the user agent. If you're using Firefox, you get Firefox in there. Same with Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Um, but this is really easy to change. So anyone who's doing um, an actual attack on your website is probably not going to be listing their user agent as Choppy or Query Seeker or PureBot or any of these other things that are blocked like MS Mass Scan, Link Scan. He does another thing in here looking at the remote host. This is actually really useful because he's going to be blocking everything from Amazon, AWS, Crollo. This looks like, I don't know what Google Google is. Just host. These are a lot of different like online hosting companies that probably don't have legitimate customer uh, uh, requests coming from them. And he's also looking at the refer. So this is going to block anything from any one of these cocaine websites, Valerian, Viagra. I'm guessing these are probably hacked websites that are just spamming content. And that's really what a lot of the 7G firewall filters is, is it's going to block a lot of spam content, just bulk trash out on the internet. Um, what types of things can you expect to block that aren't just trash requests? Well, I've set up a couple tests here to take a look and see what type of requests this thing's going to actually block. And the first test we have here is object injection. This is for any type of PHP website, has an object deserialization vulnerability, and this is going to block it right here. We can see this green means it passed our test, which means it blocked this date request data right here. Uh, but it didn't block it on the post. And this is really the big problem with the block list, uh, is that it only inspects query parameters for GET requests, which 
is a lot of internet requests, but most of the time, if you're changing the state on the server, you wanna hack a web server, you're gonna be using a different type of request. It's a post or put request. These are the types of requests that actually change state or change things on your web server. And this is something that the firewall doesn't look at at all. So we can see it did block our serialization bug on a get request, but it didn't block it on a post request. Another thing about PHP in particular is that a lot of input parameters to your web application like WordPress or Joomla or a custom PHP application will request, it will accept the same parameters on both get or post. So a lot of times this can be completely bypassed just by sending a post request with the exact same query string as you would have in a get request. Now looking at some um, things that it might block, looking at um, trying to execute remote commands on your web server, it does block any requests to bin system D, and I believe it also blocks anything to bin SH, but uh, it won't block any requests to bin Z shell, bash, PWD, any other bin commands. It's really only system D and the bin SH, so that's pretty easy to bypass. Anything I can do with system D, I can do another way, and anything I can do with uh, bin sh I can do with bin z shell or c shell or any of the other shells that are on the system so also again it doesn't look at any of the post data so we can also bypass that by sending as a post request uh, looking for Etsy files in Etsy it does block any request to Etsy password but if we send it as a post parameter it won't block it and other files in Etsy um, it doesn't block at all um, full paths to PHP files it doesn't block um, let's take a look at some of the other filtering. So over here we have SQL injection testing. So we ran our small SQL injection list and we can see that the green dots is injection attempts that it did block. The red X's are injection attempts that it didn't block. And here's a list of the types of things that were not blocked. So wait for delay. This is a time-based SQL injection attack. It does block very simple uh, request if you know anything about SQL injection basically this is hijacking queries to your database to rewrite them to do different types of commands on your SQL server than what your application wanted to do so by appending additional parameters or additional statements SQL statements onto the end of a of an input to your web application can actually change the meaning on the SQL server and inject data or pull data out of the web server so one of the ways they do that is if you have a select query to pull data out, they'll say select something from somewhere where this condition exists. You can see right here, or where nine is not equal to two. Well, nine is never equal to two, so this condition is always true. So now it's gonna pull back every single record in the database, regardless of what the criteria is. And this may allow you to bypass certain filters for things like admin only areas. So tip, one of the things that he does block is um, they'll say or one equals one. Well, one equals one is always true. So that will always pull back all the rows. So he does have a block for or one equals one, but there's a million ways you could write that query to make something true, right? And it only blocks the one way. So this is really easy to bypass. And that's really what all these green dots in here. These are all union selects, but the union selects can be easily bypassed by adding additional parentheses um, you can see sort of the things that are not blocked in here sleeps wait for delays um, actual select statements here's an or one equals one with a comment after it um, so really it has some basic SQL injection protection but it's not all-encompassing and it might block a couple automated tools but Anything like, say, SQL Map, which is a tool that automatically has WAF bypassing, is going to get right past this. Also, another way to bypass this is it doesn't inspect any post data. So if you can send the request as a post instead of a GET, you don't have to worry about it at all. Finally, we have our cross-site scripting tests, and here we are running our large XSS testing, and you can see it's going through. These are the valid XSS injections, or each one of these red X's. And I can show you what type of stuff gets through here from looking at um, our small list. 
and here you can see all the injections went through as a post request it does block bracket script quite well regardless of any type of ways to bypass that it does block anything that has the word javascript in it but things it doesn't block are on events so a really simple cross-site scripting injection is to inject an image tag that doesn't exist with an error event that runs your javascript code what is that javascript code going to do typically it's going to grab all the cookies for the user and send them off to another website so those types of injections are not blocked at all there's a list of probably i would say i have a list of 2600 sql injections or not sorry not sql injections cross-site scripting attacks and it blocks about 2000 of them about 600 of those injections are all bypasses so it's going to block some of the crud but it's definitely bypassable any other types of filtering um, it doesn't cover anything like cross-site um, request forgery um, server-side includes it might block some server-side includes the things we showed back here like these types of server-side includes um, it's not going to block any server-side request forgery um, there's a lot of different types of attacks that aren't covered by this block list and again it doesn't cover anything on post so should you use it well I think if you're a system administrator or you run a WordPress blog and you just want to put something in front of it to cut down on some of the noise this could be quite useful because this is going to run before PHP even starts so you'll be able to cut down on a lot of the noise to your web server for bogus requests so I would install the 7G block list as something to uh, increase my site performance on a PHP WordPress site or any other kind of slower or bulkier web application um, that was seeing a lot of attacks or a lot of bulk spam type of data from another website. If that's a lot of your request data, or at least it's you think it's causing you problems, installing the 6G or 7G block list could be beneficial. The 6G, 7G, or now I think they're also working on the 8G block list is not going to block any type of serious hack attempt to your website just because it's not looking at most of where hack attempts come from, the post data, and it doesn't have any context into your application or the queries. So if you're looking for robust site protection to prevent your site from getting hacked, really needs to be looking at um, a full featured web application firewall. So that's my analysis, my breakdown. I hope you found this useful. I'll be doing one or two of these videos every week and I want to get through at least a dozen firewalls specifically for the PHP ecosystem here in the next couple months. So check those out and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.